Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Rev. I'm here to usher you into the day, the week, and talk a little bit about this and a, a little bit about that, talking uh, about uh, local events, some national events, some things happening in the world today, and also what's happening within our city government. But just uh, kind of a, a precursor, uh, the city government, they, they met this week, but they didn't talk to about too much stuff, no regular committee meetings. They did have a public works committee meeting. I'll have that review a little bit later, but it's going to be a brief review what the city's been up to. But in terms of what's happening in um, the world today, one of the bigger things is that big tech keeps on getting bigger and Microsoft is eyeing the multi-billion dollar gaming company, Blizzard. What has known for World of Warcraft, the biggest online video game ever, and Candy Crush, which is arguably one of the most downloaded mobile games of everybody's iPhones and smartphones. The company plans to follow the right to an equal opportunity workplace and having Blizzard reach a settlement of $18 million for cases of sexual misconduct in the last couple of years. Um, I believe it was like that last November when they had the settlement, but I guess that money that they spent on this uh, kind of uh, put them under in a way, so they're looking to uh, sell their group. But gaming and sexism are very hand in hand, unfortunately. And with that comes transitional pains from the acquisition of Blizzard by Microsoft of a $68.7 billion ticket price. The many motives of Facebook's name change to Metaverse and their attempts to rewrite the future of gaming. Uh, Microsoft will be able to reach a uh, mainstream of casual gamers through this acquisition. Besides the company as a whole, which Blizzard is not the top dog, more like a wounded puppy looking for uh, the first big tech to take pity on the dog that bites the hand that's feed, or... Uh, the puppy's uh, teeth. My gamer friends kind of helped me la write the last one. It's not that good. but uh, it's, it's, of course, uh, this Thursday there was a speech by uh, President Joe Biden, uh, kind of like uh, thumbs up the year he's been in office. Of course, during the last uh, year we saw a major rollout of vaccines for the public and the, then the kids followed by a tumultu uh, tr uh, tumultuous end in Americans' involvement in Afghanistan, followed by so many rollbacks on the House and Senate in terms of the Build Back Better which fails as soon as Congress lost leverage for the infrastructure and, of course, the PRO Act. And so, like many places, uh, the PRO Act it was something that I'll talk a little bit uh, in a second, but uh, one of the major things that happened in the last year were a lot of those strikes that kind of kicked off in October of 2021, like John Deere, Free Delays, Kellogg Strike. I've seen many employees get better deals on how uh, many of them got started. I mean, I'm talking about the two-tier wage system, which basically pits white-collar workers against blue-collar workers. Think kind of like Michael, Michael Scott from The Office versus The Warehouse in a basketball game. That's kind of like the whole concept of white-collar versus blue-collar. A lot of the people working in the warehouse kind of get the short shaft, while the people in the office get to screw around all the time. Anyways, uh, most strikes end in the most basic deals. John Deere saw the best deal with rejection of the first two settle, uh, meaning the recurrent jobs, uh, to have better job security. Uh, Free delays got rid of what's called a suicide shift, and what those are is imagine that you're working 12-hour days, then you get off work for only eight hours, only to come back to go to work again for another 12 hours. So they got their suicide shifts along with uh, making people work on Sundays, and of course Kellogg was one of the last places to get a a deal. Uh, they had a couple uh, deals with the company uh, and the union workers uh, kind of fall through for the la last couple times. To the point where they said, like, hey, you know what? We're gonna hire new workers now. You, you know, guys, you guys stay on strike. But unfortunately, uh, the news and the world uh, and the nation kind of got uh, word of this, and there was a lot of uh, fake applications online of fake internet trolls um, uh, applying and crashing the application process. And then eventually, they reached a settlement and a deal to give them what they wanted. Um, of course, um, and in the true sense of deals. You know, no party is ever truly happy unless both ha parties are not happy. So many reasons for the folks who went on strike were very simple. Less workers and a higher, o uh, higher turnover rate resulted in, in the overworked and overstressed workers who have no option staying in outfits that would either fire them for not clocking in or, cl uh, or on time or uh, creating a series of permanent positions that would supplement the business in a stronger base. And, the, uh, and we're going back to the PRO Act something that was going to be part of the Build Back Better, a lot of things, just a lot of things were part of the Build Back Better that were just like, oh, we'll put a committee on that, oh, we'll have another committee on that. 
uh, the PRO Act was basically uh, gaslit out of the public view, and it would have made it easier to create unions and find uh, biz uh, union busters and businesses from interfering with organizing uh, groups. Um, I'm just very upset that something like this makes sense is ignored because it's not world-saving legislature. It is just kind of like grassroots uh, legislature. So speaking of world-saving, President Joe Biden promised U.S. actions in Ukraine if they had any form of border-breaking aggression. Um, being um, sarcastic on this, but Joe Biden has since tried to walk back the following statement. I think what you're going to see is that Russia will be held accountable if it invades. And it depends on what it does. It's one thing if it's a minor incursion and then we end up having a fight about what to do and not do. Uh, no major war has broken out among the two nuclear capable countries in the last, I don't know, 70 years plus. Both sides have used places like Vietnam, Korea, and uh, the latest Afghanistan to set up pawns and some kind of strategic outpost for a lot of military um, uh, actions and rule and stuff like that. But after th uh, those statements, uh, Biden has walked back and promised sanctions and economic pressure on Russia if they take further actions against Ukraine. In terms of how the U.S. as a whole is handling the situation, I believe it's the old fit tight method. All right, moving on. Let's talk about big city Missoula. It looks like Mullen Road is going to uh, be adding an extra lane, uh, totaling three lanes, um, and add the Mary Jane Boulevard to the new site of construction in Missoula. The project also is covered by the federal grant build uh, through the construction easement. won't cost the county anything, as the project also benefits the property owner. So the far, the city and the county are doing uh, rounds of federal grants and phasing to cover most of the costs of the new infrastructure with the expansion of the water system and having a city annex component to the new development. Whenever there's any kind of sewer, water, anything like that, there's always a uh, prelude to annexation um, in terms of those forms, unless the or, uh, group uh, the homeowners, the neighborhood area have an agreement to uh, uh, say no against that. But then again, you'd probably lose any kind of deal and being able to be hooked up to the city's water infrastructure. So far, this is only about the road, but this is also part of the uh, 54 acres of the property, which will be sudden change to the Missoula area via the Missoula Build Project, which stands for Better Utilizing Investments to Leverage Development. So far, this week seems like the city and county are doing a little Less coming off of uh, MLK Junior Day. MCAT usually does a live stream slash special broadcast from the MLK, the St. Anthony Xavier Church. Uh, but uh, we requested their Zoom recording like we did last week, like we did uh, previous years, and we'll be able to air it on MCAT at some point pretty soon. So let's talk about one more thing that's, uh, that kind of caught my eye just this morning. And this is an uh, article by Martin K uh, Kidson from the Missoula Current. This is Missoula Redevelopment Agency to fund engineering work for the Northside Housing Project. So part of this is that they're working through WGM Group, and the WGM Group is a uh, contractor, developer that works with the city of Missoula and MRA. Uh, just the other day, Thursdays usually when they have the MRA meetings, and Missoula Redevelopment Agency is the one that kind of puts in those tax increment financing. And yes, they are going to be putting some money and investments into this. They're going to be investing about $316,000 in tax increment to fund the cost of designing the street. And so part of this is to leverage WGM Group to be like, hey, you build this for us, and we'll give you a tax break for the things that you help develop. So boom, this is kind of what they're doing with it, to upwards of $316,000. The city pa uh, purchased the 19 acres off of the Scott Street north side part of it. And this was going to be a major development. Uh, uh, they bought it for about $6.3 million, and it approved an agreement with the Rivara last year to develop nine acres into a mixed-use housing project with an elemental element of affordability. And so far, uh, I kind of looked at this a little bit, but the affordability is usually about the 100 to 120 percent the uh, area uh, median income, which uh, it's taken into account. You know, two people who are making about 60 percent of the uh, area income. It's, it mostly benefits uh, multiple people living in these places, not just a single person living there as well. But um, the townhouses and condos are proposed for community land trust covering the three acres on the north end of the project. The number of units in, the, uh, in that portion of the project has seen at 42 townhouses and 36 condos, and this is all going to happen on the north side. They've been talking about this for quite some time, and this is the kind of like the real kind of push forward in de developing this site in terms of just uh, basic infrastructure and big, uh, making designs and uh, adding some input as well. So 
tax increment financing is very much like mm, we're using our city money on this but this has been a city project from the very start and so it's it kind of makes sense that the city would want to invest a little bit more on affordable housing and also making this area pretty good but i guess the biggest controversy from that article that i just read was uh just alleyway parking trying to figure out parking hey you know uh you're you're building in downtown close approximately to downtown uh, city of missoula high density housing is kind of uh being more uh keen and more uh proved upon but then at the same time we're also dealing with the fact that uh we've have we've had to deal with parking forever in the city of missoula so it's going to be interesting how this turns out so all right so one of the other big stories that are happening in montana uh, this isn't just going to affect Missoula, but also the whole state of Montana, and it's about wolves and grizzly bears. And um, just the last couple years, uh, we've seen just a lot of just kind of like throw caution to the wind, and Montana just being like, oh, you know what, why, 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 we'll just let people do as many, like kill as many of the uh, formerly endangered species here in the state of Montana. And so far, Montana trappers are allowed to trap up to 10 wolves each. So each trapper can do up to 10 wolves, and those shot and killed number in the 20s, uh, this season is slated to end in March, but some of these uh, some of these organizations in the Yellowstone area have voiced concerned about uh, their uh, livelihoods. You know, a lot of them do those kind of like nature hikes and be like, "Oh, wolf spotting," and also photography and stuff like that. So they want to. So a lot of, they've been seeing a lot of businesses, uh, a lot of people come to tour and see these animals, but with this over um, kind of like abundance of hunting happening in the state of Montana. People are definitely worried that uh, 94 of the wolves living in the Yellowstone area will be threatened by this. So since 2011, wolves have been delisted and have been closely monitored to keep numbers with policy limited about uh, five uh, wolves per person for districts 313 and 316, which was uh, near northern Yellowstone. But when Gianforte became governor, kind of let those people do uh, whatever, and here we are. Uh, trapping is crazy. It's crazy efficient. I mean, we've seen a lot of trends and a lot of uh, wolves being trapped. Wolves are not something most people want to eat. But uh, hunt for trophies and pelts. Um, hunting can be uh, proven to help species grow because sometimes when, you know, you have an alpha in a pack and they're a little bit too big and aggressive to the other wolves, it makes it harder for kind of uh, uh, biodiversity to continue. So a lot of inbreeding kind of happens. So it's always good to kind of have those kind of hunts so you can hunt the alpha and kind of get that out of the way. So then more would you can have more healthier breeding pairs as a result. This also comes at the heels of Gianforte's attempt at also removing grizzly bears from the endangered species list. Montana Governor Gianforte has submitted a petition to the U.S. Fish, Wildlife and, uh, Wild, Fish and Wildlife Services to remove Endangered Species Act protections from grizzly bears in the northern continental divide ecosystem the area within the glacier national park in the bob marshall wilderness uh, with over a thousand grizzly bears alone in montana uh, the total population of bears is estimate of grizzly bears in the united states is fifty five thousand dollars oh no fifty five thousand grizzly bears sorry it's a small number in montana which only covers about a thousand and of course the rest of it is alaska uh, and so there's barely any bears just in the lower 48 states alone. So the Missoula cu current article really paints a picture of doom and gloom. But as we have good amount of people and of concern about the grizzly bears, we'll be able to protect them. Also, grizzly bears are dangerous and have been known to hunt humans. Uh, black bears really attack and are like, I'm starving. Let's eat. Uh, grizzly bears will stare you down and really consider eating you. It's like, I'm bored. I will guess I'll eat that human. Uh, managing bears is very difficult, and a lot of times uh, Montana Fish Wildlife Park would just as well euthanize a bear if it gets too close to humans too many times. So those are kind of like the stories, and I'm sorry I kind of went into it, but being from Montana, I kind of want to see my play, you know, everyone thriving, the animals, the creatures, everything, just uh, including hunting. And if we throw caution to the wind, our children will be able to shoot grizzly bears in the face. Um, not in Mon Montana. But of, of course, up next, I got a little fun short for you guys, kind of relieving some of the tension. Um, this is from the Saturday drop-ins. Um, we did a live action movie because a couple of kids were kind of getting kind of bored with doing some stop animation. So without further ado, here's the premiere of the job interview.
Has anybody, hi coworker, has anybody called yet for an interview? Uh, I, I don't know. I did pick up the phone. Okay. Well, tell me if anybody comes. Okay. Restarting work. <laughs> um, what will I be doing? You'll be doing. <laughs> so. Is your, your, interview, your interview is here. I know. So, what are your upsides and what are your downsides? So, like, I work like a place for um, board. It was about two years ago. They fired me. I was, like, flirting with one of the, um, their workers. I just mean... What, what about making all your workers girls? That's not going to be possible because I need some boy workers, but How old are you? Oh, I'm 15 or better. Oh, okay. Is your birthday? Uh, January 6th. Hey, your new interview is here. Okay, can you just stand behind me and do nothing? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Nice Yo. to meet you. Nice <laughs> to meet you, too. So, Lee, how old are you? I am 21. Right, 21. So, what are your upside down? Well, my downside is that I fell and broke my leg and I was free. Okay, what's your upside? And my upside is that one time I found a card. Did your mom just do something? Yeah, they Well, I need, I need, I need actual upsides and downs. Oh, Please. um. What are you doing at my desk? <laughs> what are you doing at my desk? Uh. Why are you here? What was, what was that for? Get back to work. I don't want to hear it. What are you doing? I'm just following your lead. I like the mic. This March 21st through the 25th. While spring break lets your kids out, you can drop them off here at MCAT. From 10 to 3, your kid gets to use many of our resources to create and share their own stories. For kids age 8 to 14, a fun break from their spring break. Spring Flicks. Well, there you go. There's a, a nice little short film that the kids helped make uh, this Saturday. Um, yeah, it's uh, one of those just kind of like uh, kind of like a hidden background tease if you guys are interested and if you have a kid between the ages of about 8 or 14 roughly. A uh, middle school age is perfect for a lot of kids looking to get involved with some media, learn to edit. Stop animation is a great way for a lot of kids to uh, be a part of it. So let's talk about uh, how you can find more information. Again, you can go to MCAT.org. Uh, we are slowly getting kind of like the ball rolling 
the link available. But if you uh, wanted to apply, uh, we'll have uh, the link uh, up there at some point. So um, let's talk about uh, some movies that are coming out this week since we uh, were showing some movies and stuff like that. Let's kick things off with, uh, oh, actually, it's coming out eventually. They keep on pushing the date. Morbius stars an actor who is uh, not a has-been. Perhaps he falls into more of that, oh, he's in that? And as who? Huh. Well, I'm hiding from society. Uh, anyways, this movie is coming out April 1st. <laughs> no joke. I hope this movie is a prank and no one is going to see an early 20s, uh, 2000s Daredevil type movie. Up next, we have an official movie that's actually coming out this uh, weekend as well. It's called Redeeming Love. Oh, you know, I always like those kind of like Hallmark original movies where they pump in a lot of big budget and they release in the theaters. A woman who survived an oxygen original movie about a woman and their abusers comes from a movie about a tra uh, tra uh, trauma woman whose only hope is a man. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, watch this movie if you believe a man will save you from the worst of the world has, to, uh, has done to you. Uh, anyways, I think there is something to do with Montana or Cowboys using their rugged charm to set that woman straight for having a tragic backstory. Up next, we have The King's Daughter. Uh, something about finding love about social status in the Victoria times where most people in nobility were sleeping around while trying to act properly. Anyways, King Louis the Fourteenth will use his illegitimate daughter to get the key to immortality. So like a fantasy with a father realizing that he, being a dad is better than being an immortal, uh, kind of like Shang-Chi. Uh, finding her individuality while at the same time dealing with the real white w woman issues like uh, talking to a mermaid and saving that mermaid, thus saving herself. This may, movie is basically made for five-year-old girls, so enjoy. Uh, dads out there who can't connect with their daughters. Anyways, up next we have War Hunt. Uh, here's a bunch of movies that are coming out this uh, weekend as well, but no one's probably going to see in theaters. A tale of old men getting their last raid only to get betrayed, survive at great costs, and go against the indiscernible odds with a Game of Thrones or whatever, this 1945 war movie, but like the 90s Crow movie. Then we got The Tiger Rising. Talking tiger and kids having an adventure. <laughs> Count me in. Dennis Quaid movies of late have been like, here's a family drama with an uplifting ending. Check. So like one of those uh, Tiger King tigers got away and this family looks after this tiger and stuff happens. Moving to the last. Finally, we got the laureate um, from those. Uh, I think uh, Laurie, our program director, would love this one from the kind of movies <laughs> that people tell you to see, but you're unsure what they even said. The laureate. The laureate, the laureate, so a couple takes a sex babysitter and lives in the cottage, so to not pos polite society, 1902 British society together, writers be whack, so it's one of those kind of repressed British movies, so you can enjoy it, it's wonderful, it's great, it's, it's international, but it's still English, so anyways... <laughs> There's the movies that are coming out this weekend. Up next, I have a movie that I read dub for you guys from the 1971 movie, Isle of the Snake People. Here is uh, the weird uh, beginning. Wow, these dolls are so realistic. Why am I saying that out loud? I wonder who's listening. Hello? Hello? All right. Anyways, there's nobody around. All right, just lay back. All right. Uh, <clears throat> the voice actor is getting uncomfortable in the situation. Uh, uh, I need a hero. Cue Colonel Sanders. <laughs> no one expects Colonel Sanders, but I did expect this to happen. I heard you say hello. Oh, thank God. Don't be thanking him anytime soon. I see you with that lady there. This is not appropriate. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm old, but I'm tough. I'm whiskey strong. Now you got some explaining to do. You're guilty. Oh, please, it's not what you look like. It's, um... Oh, it looks like an awful lot like you're trying to seduce a doll or a woman or dead thing or Lady Frankenstein of some sort. I got it on the dark web. Get over it. <sighs> you might be able to pay for a good woman. But how much does it cost a good not sleep after all? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What price have you made on your soul? Bet it was not nonsense. Well, you just can call me the Repo Man. I'm here to repossess your soul. 
from all these bad, bad things that you've done. And all sorts of other things, too, I can see in your eyes. Hmm. Miss Munster, come on in. She's on sabbatical, so be nice to her. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You better set up, young missy. Come on now, time for school. What are you gonna do to her? What are you doing? Stop it! Stop it! What do you think you're doing? Stop it! Over there right now! Please! Oh no, I can't watch! Oh, I'm gonna throw up! <laughs> Now I just can't look away. Hmm. Well, he's all gone. Oh no! I'm gonna have to pay extra for shipping next time. You know, sometimes I like to do a blind dub and stuff, and that's what you get. Uh. <laughs> Up next, we're going to talk about some city council stuff. And there was no city council on Monday, but they did have a committee meeting this week. Um, Public Works, and uh, they got to improve the right-of-way easement. Not too much going on there. Expect some construction on Eaton Street from 7th to 13th Street. So, like, sidewalks. Oh, actually, that's my street. I usually, usually go, <laughs> go on Eaton Street quite a bit. But anyways, it looks like quite the project because this area is severely lacking sidewalk infrastructure. This is going to be a $760,000 project for the six blocks behind my housing development. What a price to pay. Up next, we have some events. Not really much going on in our city council this week, but let's talk about some of the things that are happening within the community of Missoula. So if you're interested in doing anything here at the library, let me just break it down for you. You got Tiny Tales and Story Time starting at around 10.30 a.m. this morning. It's a great way for kids to learn to do some reading, pick up some of their own books, and also have special guests, finger plays, uh, puppet shows, music kind of things. It's, it's all, it all varies depending upon the day, but they usually do this on Fridays and Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. in the program room on the second floor or the art room on the second floor as well. So there's a lot of uh, great opportunities for that. If you're interested in doing uh, some kind of like mothers uh, kind of hang out and do some uh, stitching, yarns, or anything like that, or heck, even watercolor, uh, there's uh, a noon classes that happen weekly every Friday at noon on the fourth floor, usually in the uh, large conference room. Uh, teen Writers Group, uh, they even been meeting digitally, but they also have a uh, Teen Writers Group at 3.30 in the afternoon for uh, teenagers looking to improve their writing skills. This is uh, geared for uh, teenagers age about 14 to about 19 and just want to improve their uh, literary skills. Uh, and also, if you're interested in learning more about Adobe Premiere and Adobe Photoshop. We usually do those classes here at MCAT. I believe our instructor that usually does it on Fridays is out sick with COVID, so uh, get well soon. Um, but we can schedule an appointment for people upcoming for the next couple of weeks as well, and you can get, a, you get in contact with us at uh, 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT, but also is a great resource for people as well by logging on to MCAT.org. Uh, basic Food um, Handler Safety and Sanitation, Lifelong Learning Center. Have you ever uh, wanted to work in a restaurant or just gain new kitchen skills? It's, it, this is from interactive classes. This is a class to kind of learn what it's like to be kind of like a work at a restaurant. Um, you have speakers from local restaurants have options of getting your food handler certification from NRAEF Serve Safe program and will learn the ins and outs of food preparation and sanitation. This is actually a good step for a lot of people who want to take a class uh, who work in the restaurant business and stuff like that. It's just like, you know what, this is good, some good training. I want to take the next step, maybe be a manager or, or anything like this. More classes you can take, and this is one of those kind of classes that they offer as well, as long as many other lifelong learning type classes, GED prep and all that stuff as well. So there's just a lot of lot, uh, great stuff with Lifelong Learning Center. It's kind of like you pay per class rather than, you know, you're paying for outright the whole college, and they have a lot of certification there as well. So, uh Usually I like to talk a little bit about the Lifelong Learning Center every show, but this is just something that it's a great way for continuing education for adults to pick up some new skills and new certificates. Martin Luther King Jr. inspired activities at Family First Learning Lab. 
Uh, this is at the uh, here at the library starting at 10 a.m. for Spectrum Discovery Center. And also Family First Learning Lab as well starts at 10 a.m. And this is MLK Junior Inspired Activities. We'll also have MLK in Junior Inspired Activity Kits to take home all week. And the, uh, the Family's First Learning Lab classroom will be filled with pictures and quotes from the man himself. Um, Richie Reinholdt performs at Sensman Reinery, so if you're interested in doing some performances on a Friday night tonight, Richie Reinholdt performs at Sensman Winery tonight, uh, Painting with a Twist, if you're interested in doing some painting and enjoying some wine and hanging out, Painting with a Twist has that, Dead Men's Cell, phone by Sarah Rule, is going to be at the Zach, uh, live music, Josh Farmer, I uh, always like to give him a shout out, he's going to be at Staven Hoop, he's going to play some live music at the uh, old Staven Hoop. Uh, the Workers and Wild Prairie Smoke is going to be at the Union Club. In Union Club, they usually have jam bands where people can dance to and hang out and all that stuff. All right, if you're interested in some of the farmer's market uh, during the winter time, the winter market happens at the uh, mall from 9 to 1 p.m. And everyone's favorite farmer's market is coming back. The Orchard Home Farmer Market is kicking off uh, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And it's going to be at uh, Orchard Homes Country Life Club. And you can't miss it. It's just off of 3rd Street. Um, wildlife Tracks and Signs, Schwann Valley Connections. If you're interested in learning how to read tracks and to sign to determine the movements and behaviors of the animals in the Swan Valley and beyond, they'll start an infor informal lecture and an overview of techniques before class. The day of the field trip, they'll be spent putting these techniques into practice and will educate Director Sarah Lamer, who is certified through uh, Cyber Tracker North America. So. That's just some of the things that are happening in Saturday morning, but also MCAT tour and training is happening as well. If you're interested in taking out equipment, you know, we have uh, DSLR cameras, we have video cameras, all sorts of great way for people to kind of get started with videography. We also provide a studio for people to uh, rent out as well as two podcast rooms. And so this is an orientation to kind of get uh, just kind of oriented and kind of uh, idea of about how to be a part of our television community. Um, new exhibit, grand opening. Life on the Edge is going to be uh, featured at Spectrum Discovery Center here in the library starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, intersections Art Exhibit at Radius Gallery is going to be at 11 a.m. at the uh, Radius Gallery on Saturday. But also, MCAT is coming back for our Saturday drop-ins. MCAT at Missoula Public Library. You can join us from 1 to 3 p.m. for kids age 8 to about 14. It's a great way for kids to do some um, movie making and stop animation as well. If you're interested in doing some other things with the Life Learner Learning Center, they also have some great cooking classes. And this one is cake decorating basic starting at 2.30 uh, tomorrow afternoon. Big jump from 2. So we're going to jump over to the late night events. You got uh, leftover sal salmon is going to be at the Wilma. It's going to be some bluegrass music. And one of the big events that are happening this weekend and beyond is Gilligan's Island, the musical. Enjoy some fun, family-friendly uh, stage musical based on the 1960s uh, TV show Gilligan's Island. Crafted by Sherwood Schwartz, this plot is filled with wacky slapstick humor, f uh, foiled attempts at being rescued, and the familiar castaways. MCT has been doing shows that have been unlifting and to help forget about the times we're in and some fun shows with Session. Nightly shows during the week are 7.30 p.m. and matinees at 2 p.m. with a Sunday early evening show at 6.30 p.m. So most of the shows are at 7.30 p.m. with the 2 p.m. matinees and then Sunday have the earlier night. All right, Dead Man's Cell Phone by Sarah Rule will be at the Zach again, so she's going to be playing on Friday night, but if you missed it, you can check her out on Saturday night. Karaoke at the Bowling Alley and DJ Club Music at the Badlander uh, Sunday. Uh, if you're interested, um, just so you guys know, uh, usually you should always look at Sundays if you wanted to find out more of Missoula's classical music, string orchestras, uh, bands, and stuff like that. Logjam presents, and I'm pleased to welcome Yonder uh, Mont a Mountain String Band for a live concert performance at the Wilma on January 23rd, this Sunday. And they have uh, tickets go on sale on Friday, uh, have been on sale for quite some time. Uh, this is going to be at the Wilma, and it's going to be kicking off at 7 p.m. on Sunday night. And usually they do this, they usually have kind of like string and woodwinds and bands and that kind of stuff happening at the Denison Theater, the Music Recital Hall at the University. But it seems like this one is uh, really big, so you can expect this to be at the Wilma for the Yonder Mountain String Band. All right, so those are some of your events. If you're interested in learning more about these events, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is a wonderful resource for people finding out what's the heck's going on in Missoula. Just what the heck's going on? All right. <laughs> but anyways, 
there's not really uh, much more i got to say about it. It's been a pretty short show today. And if you want to learn more about me, you can uh, find out more about me by liking me on our, my Facebook page and also uh, following me and liking that bell on our, my YouTube channel, Wake Up Missoula. So without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp.